Okay, good evening. It is a good evening this evening. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. The, let's give a warm welcome to all the advocates who have worked so long and so hard for so many years. And let's give a round of applause to all the legislators who finally got it done. We took the vote. And we have a special guest of honor. It couldn't come together any better than it's come together today. Sarah Weddington, who argued Roe v. Wade here today on the 46th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Let's give Sarah a big round of applause. I was just talking to some members of my staff about this and you know, this evening is a little bittersweet for me. Sweet because we won. And we won after a long, long, long fight. You know, your family members all put it into context for you. I was speaking to one of my daughters. And uh, I said, oh, it's great. It's great the legislature is going to pass the Reproductive Health Act. She said, the Reproductive Health Act? What were you supposed to do that like eight years ago? <laughs> I said, well, yeah, but you know, it got complicated. She said, hey, Dad, don't ever give me problems for a deadline again. <laughs> it's a little different. But this was, this was a long, long haul. And for the advocacy community, what you have done here, the way you stayed with it, Planned Parenthood by, led by Robin Chappelle Golston. <laughs> the National Institute of Reproductive Health and Andrea Miller. Now, and Sonia Osorio, NYCLU, Donna Lieberman, the ACOG. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. To the legislators who would never give up the, the fight, I first applaud the Legislative leaker, Leader, Speaker Carl Heasty, who's doing a great job. <laughs> Senate Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins, who brought a new fresh breath. Assembly member Deborah Glick, who <laughs> I didn't get to finish saying what I was going to say about Deborah Glick. <laughs> Assembly member Deborah Glick, who has made an entire career out of being the first at the head of the crusade to fight for human equality and human rights for every human being. We have such respect for you. God bless you. Another round of applause for Deborah Gleick. <laughs> to the Senate sponsor who was tenacious, Senator Liz Krueger, we thank you. Before she had time to be Senate leader, one of the original sponsors of this bill, Andrea Stewart Cousins, again. <laughs> Today is sweet because in a few minutes I will sign this bill and another New York national precedent will be established, the most aggressive women's equality platform in the nation is going to be in law in this state. And that's the way it should be. 
I also want to thank my staff. I see Mylon Dennerstein here and Melissa and Alfonso. And this, this one was personal for many. Uh, 2013, it all comes around. I propose the Women's Equality Act 10 points. Sarah Weddington sends me her book, A Question of Choice, with a note inside it. Congratulations on the women's equality agenda. As it turns out, we don't pass all 10. We only pass nine. And the one that didn't pass was reproductive health. I don't have the heart to say to Sarah, actually, we didn't pass the 10th one. But I can say to Sarah, Tonight, we are 10 for 10 on women's equality, and thank you for the note. I say bittersweet because there is a bitterness, because we shouldn't be here in the first place. We should not have a federal government that is trying to roll back women's rights to a point 47, 48, 50 years ago. This administration defies American evolution. We're supposed to be moving forward. We're supposed to be advancing. We're supposed to live and learn. We're supposed to be growing. And their entire perspective on the world is a retrospective. We're going to go back, take you back to the good old days instead of take us forward. Everything is about division by income, by race, by gender, just over and over and over, the same mantra. So that's the bitterness. We shouldn't be here. And the bitterness is how fast that political pendulum can swing. Just think, when we were debating the Reproductive Health Act, our Republican colleagues in the Senate said to us, it's unnecessary anyway, because no one would ever try to reverse Roe v. Wade. Remember that? That's what they said. It was unnecessary because nobody would try to reverse Roe v. Wade. Well, how wrong they were. Because this president and these extremists are going there. Do not kid yourself. Today's decision on the military ban for transgender, that 5-4, you're going to hear that over and over and over again. That's why they wanted the Supreme Court. And that's why we had, a, had to pass this law, to protect our state. And that's why I believe we have to go even a step further and do a constitutional amendment so no governor, no legislator, no political swing can ever jeopardize a woman's right to control her own body in this state. New York setting the bar on women's equality, like we did on marriage equality, where we said simply to this nation that love does not discriminate. And that message reverberated all across the nation. This message is going to do the same thing. This has been too long coming, and it's been too obvious and too unfair. Women's equality in the law and in the Constitution for all, we stand up and point the exact opposite direction of this president and this federal government. And there couldn't be a better time. Now, Sarah Weddington, in many ways, Sarah, what you did is what we as a collective try to do. You made such a difference in your life You've been such an example for so many. Rarely has such a precedent been so powerful for so long. And the way you did it, taking on all the odds, it, you couldn't write a better story of heroism and courage and leadership. 26 years old, in Texas, a new attorney, takes on a case to sue the state of Texas on behalf of a woman who was pregnant, who was forced to carry the baby to term and put it up for adoption. 26-year-old lawyer wins in the district court, 
wins seven to two in the Supreme Court. Youngest person to successfully argue a case in the Supreme Court to today, believe it or not. That is Sarah Weddington. And Sarah, that is such a beautiful public service. That is such a precedent that has driven laws all across the nation. We would like to give you as an honorary New Yorker, we're gonna work on your accent just a little bit, <laughs> but we would like to give you the New York Award for Public Service. Thank you. Oh boy. It, it says, to Sarah Weddington for your success winning the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade decision and your lifelong commitment to equality, freedom, and individual rights for all. Thank God you bless you. God much. bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. I'll take this. Can you say something? Or just... Yes, please. Okay. First, I want to say a very sincere thank you. Uh, the governor's tie indicates the depth of his sincerity, and um, so it's, he's, I was so grateful when he called and asked me to come and be part of this. Um, I do have another uh, boot that's all, has glitter and all kinds of stuff on it, and it is an award to um, women who kick ass. <laughs> now... <laughs> But this is a great award, and I'm very pleased with it. It was also fun to be in the House and the Senate. I got to see more of the senators vote, but one, you know, who had the bow tie on? I'm sorry, I don't know their names. Who was it? Oh, yeah. Um, so there were some really great speeches and wonderful presentations. Um, I look back in history and people have said, how did you, uh, Governor, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to speak no more than four to five minutes, so would you, no, no, you have to give me signals, because I'll quit when you say quit. <laughs> okay, well, I had 30 minutes there. No. <laughs> um, some people have said, how did you get to argue Roe versus Wade? And I said, well, there were a group of civilians uh, who were very active on women's issues, and they came over to the law school where I was working one day, and they said, Sarah, we're trying to tell people about contraception. They say to us, where could we get an abortion? We've tried to research that information so we can tell them. And of course, New York was the basic answer, and we were trying to raise money for women to get to New York. Um, and then they said, we really think we need to file a lawsuit to try to change the law so we don't have to keep going through all of this. And they said, would you think about filing a case on this? And I said, well, I really think you ought to get somebody with experience. <laughs> because at that point, I had done uncontested divorces, <laughs> wills for people with no money, and one adoption for my uncle. That was it. <laughs> but they said, well, how much would you charge us? And I said, oh, I'd do it for free. And they said, you are our lawyer. <laughs> and that's how I got to do it. I decided I wasn't sure I was going to win, so I ran for the legislature and was the first woman elected from Austin Travis County to be in the State House of Representatives. <laughs> And I was at the Capitol on January 22nd, 1973, and the phone rang. It was the New York Times. And they said to my assistant, Ann Richards, uh, <laughs> she was my administrative assistant, they said, does Sarah have uh, a comment today, or does Mr. W Ms. Weddington have a comment today about Roe versus Wade? And, and Ann said, should she? And 
and the reporter said it was decided today. And Anne said, how was it decided? <laughs> and they said she won it seven to two. So that day it never occurred to me that 46 years later I would be a part of this very important thing with Liz and Deborah and so many of you trying to reinstall the momentum of Roe versus Wade and doing it very well. Um, Governor Cuomo, I am deeply grateful to you. I went in your office, uh, as you know, to say a few words before we came in here, and I put my uh, speech and my purse and my copy of Roe vs. Wade on your desk. I haven't seen it since. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so somebody's got it, and I'm <laughs> I'll find it before I go back to Texas. Um, <laughs> But it is with a sincere gratitude that I say to New York, thank you for what you've done for women. Thanks to all of you as advocates who kept this going. Thanks to those of you who are the legislators that made it happen. And I can't wait to see the governor sign it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins. Well, it's just, you know, this is an amazing day. And I'm not going to take a lot of time because there's a main event. And that's what Sarah said to see this bill get signed. But I do want to thank uh, Speaker Hasty again. Uh, this partnership is going to bear a lot of very, very good fruit. <laughs> you know, I want to thank Liz, and as I said before, just an incredible champion. She, she. Uh, She's always been somebody that I know when, uh, when Liz is fighting for something, it's a good thing. And Liz, thank you for carrying it for the Senate. And the same with Deborah. Deborah, you don't mess around with Deborah. <laughs> so, you know, if there, were, if there were any two people who could get it done, it's Liz and Deborah. So, thank you, Deborah. There was so much applause when, you know, we talked about the, the Senate because we know what happens with the Senate for all those years. The Senate was the place where good ideas go to die, <laughs> where women's rights were muted. And when I carried this bill in 2007, I thought this was a no-brainer. As I said on the floor, I never thought that people would object to us taking women's health issues and taking them out of the homicide codes and identifying them as real women's health issues. I never thought that people somehow felt that even in 2007 and eight and nine, and you all could count, up to, as the governor said, when we put together the uh, women's agenda, even then, it just was unacceptable that we would codify Roe v. Wade, something, Sarah, that I know you fought so passionately for before good reason. To be in New York in the 2000s and have people rebuff women's choice and women's voice was something that I don't think any of us could ever understand. But today, we changed that. Today, we're reaffirming that women have a voice and women have a choice. And this time, the lieutenant governor got to preside. The last time you were there, I think you, uh, we, you weren't allowed to speak and we weren't even allowed to talk about this issue. So congratulations for being part. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And then to the governor. 
I thank you. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you for understanding that this is critical for us and not even waiting a moment to sign this bill because you know it's how important it is for your daughters, for all of our, our children and our posterity. So I appreciate you. This is one of those things I'm going to say in front of everybody because we have this, this, this relationship but sometimes I speak real truth. <laughs> the truth is I thank you for this. Thank you. Please welcome Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty. Well, before we get to all of the, uh, the wonderful moments on this, I do have one thing to say. It's been three weeks now. How much longer is Andrea going to get more applause than me? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Again, as I've been telling everybody, there's no one happier than me because as, as the majority leader said, the, uh, the partnership and the way that the Assembly and the Senate and working with the governor, the way that we've been moving, uh, we're going to do so many great things here in, in, in the state. So Andrea, once again, congratulations. <laughs> governor Cuomo, thank you. And as I said earlier in, um, when we had our press uh, event and I mentioned that so many times we would meet with the advocates, so many times we'd have meetings and I would say to the advocates, yes, we're going to pass this bill. And I'd sit there full well knowing that it was no chance that the Senate was ever going, the Republican Senate was never going to let this bill uh, see the light of day. And, and I think for those of us who actually run for office, there's no bigger, I'd say, thrill than when you make the difficult on the impossible, impossible into the possible. And I think today is one of those days that I think for all of us, it reminds us of why we ran for office, why you went out there to campaign, because this is a day that we all got to stand up for women in the state of New York. So congratulations to the advocates. But most of all, and I say most of all because we had very, very difficult conferences. And it's to me, being the, the speaker, having time after time after time to go back and say to the women in the conference that it's not going to happen. So now I'm so happy I never have to say that again. So congratulations to everyone. Now the governor will sign the bill. <laughs>